Hey folks, welcome back to Tech Tech and More Tech. I'm Carlo, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to install Z-Wave on your home assistant. As always, there is a written version of this, so if you prefer that, head on over to techtechandmoretech.com or check the link in the description below. Before we get started, I quickly just wanna go over the prerequisites to follow along in this guide. First, you need Home Assistant running on something, so I'm running on a Raspberry Pi, and you need some sort of Z-Wave module. I personally am using this Nortec Z-Wave and Zigbee all-in-one USB device. The reason I chose this one is because it has, like I said, Z-Wave and Zigbee in one device, saves a bit of money, and it works beautifully. If you have some sort of other Z-Wave module, like a AOTech or something similar, it should all be the same, so you should be able to follow along without any issues. And of course, you'll probably want some sort of Z-Wave device to add to your new Z-Wave network, otherwise, I don't know why you're watching this, but thank you. So now that we have that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started. The first step is to just plug in your Z-Wave stick or module into your Home Assistant device. I'm just gonna plug mine right into the USB and that's it. Once that's done, we're gonna head on over to a computer because everything else is gonna be done within Home Assistant. All right, now that you've plugged in the USB controller into your Raspberry Pi, we're gonna to go to our computer and go to our Home Assistant. Once we've logged into our Home Assistant, we can double check to make sure the USB controller is actually being uh, seen by going to Supervisor and then System and then Hardware. And at the top here, we have Serial. And under Serial, you'll see that you have Silicon Labs Hub Z Smart Home Controller. You've got two of those. That's of course because the USB controller that I'm using, the Nortec one, has both Z-Wave and Zigbee on it. Now we'll notice that it also says TTY USB 1, TTY AMA 0, and TTY USB 0. We're gonna use this in the configuration to basically tell Home Assistant where to look for that specific uh, hardware. So let's go ahead and exit this. We're gonna to go to our file editor and that's gonna show us our configuration.yaml. And we're gonna type in this little bit of text right here. Z-Wave colon and then USB path dev TTY USB zero. And then for, for Zigbee, it's gonna be this, but I'm gonna cover Zigbee in a different video because it's way more involved to get it up and running. So for Z-Wave, all you gotta do is type this. Once you've gone ahead and typed that in, what you can do is hit on save. And then we can double check to make sure our configuration file is good by going to configuration, server controls, and check configuration. It is valid, so let's go ahead and just restart. Should only take, you know, a couple moments for it to restart, and then we're gonna check to see if the integration shows up. If a simple restart of Home Assistant doesn't notice the change to see the uh, Z-Wave controller that you're using, then you might have to actually restart the entire Raspberry Pi. And the way you would do that is by going to Supervisor, System, and Reboot. All right, so let's go to Configuration, and let's hit go to Integrations, because that's where it's gonna be. If we scroll down, we can see, if everything went properly, you will see Z-Wave show up here. And that means that it is basically done. So if we hit on Configure, we're gonna take to this screen, and this is where you can manage all your different Z-Wave devices. You can see I've got a couple already and you can check the log to see if there's any issues. In order to add a Z-Wave device, all you really have to do is hit on add node, walk over to the device, pair it, and then come back to see if it pairs. But if you have a big house or if you've got multiple levels, running back and forth isn't particularly useful. So instead, because this is all just a web interface anyways, I can just load this up on my iPad and do it all right next to the, each device that I'm gonna be pairing. So let's take a look at that now. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and add a Z-Wave light switch, this one right here. So we've unpaired it from the SmartThings hub from before, and we're gonna go to Configuration, Integrations, and go down to Z-Wave, and Configure. Now all you really have to do is just hit on Add Node. So here in Nodes, like I said, we can see the ones that we already have. So we're gonna go to Add Node, and press that once, and now it should be pairing. Give it a second to see if it works, and we can check on nodes. Yep, we've got one here, unknown, static, so it's still working. Tap it again, still static. Might take out a second or two, so don't be too hasty. We can also hit on heal network. 
for it to basically kind of double check everything. And now, and there it is, it is added. So now if you go to your devices, it's gonna be the only one. And now you can actually turn it off and you can see this the lights right now. If I turn this off, the lights kind of just went off a little bit back and that's all there is to it and that's how you add a device. And there you have it folks, Z-Wave up and running on your Home Assistant instance. Super straightforward and then adding new devices is just as easy as I showed you. Removing them is basically the same step. And now you have a local based Z-Wave network that you can control from anywhere and doesn't rely on any sort of cloud to make it work. As always, thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, hit that like and subscribe button for plenty more videos to come. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below and I'll help you out as much as I can. Until next time, see ya.